What up, what up, what up? This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, and this is my physiology playlist. In the last video, we have talked about the structure of the muscle. Today, we'll talk about troponin I, troponin T, troponin C, tropomyosin, the T tubules, and the sarcoplasmic reticulum with the terminal cistern. We will discuss the dihydropyridine receptor and the ryanodine receptor. And we will finish it all by talking about the neuromuscular junction, aka the motor end plate with its beautiful end plate potential. With that said, now let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. In the previous video, we have talked about that we have three types of muscles, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth, voluntary, involuntary, involuntary. Your body has about 640 muscles. Each muscle is made of muscle fibers or myofibers or myocytes. Each muscle fiber is made of myofibrils, and each fibril is made of myofilaments, and we have two types of filaments, thin actin and thick myosin. Here is your muscle. Each muscle is made of fascicles. The fascicles are bundles of muscle fibers. Each bundle contains individual muscle fibers. Each muscle fiber of skeletal muscles has many nuclei. It's multinucleated. Each muscle fiber is made of myofibrils, and each myofibril is divided by Z lines into sarcomeres. That's a sarcomere, that's a sarcomere, that's a sarcomere, and that's a sarcomere. Each sarcomere has myosin, which are the thick filaments, and actin, which are the thin filaments. So what's the structural unit of your muscle? Muscle fiber. Your freaking anatomy professor cares about this. But what's the functional unit of the muscle? The sarcomere. Your woke physiology professor cares about that. Actin is thin and shiny and isotropic. That's why actin is abbreviated as I from isotropic. Myosin is thick, non-shiny, and isotropic. And the abbreviation is A. So there is a part of the myofibril that is made only of actin fibers. These pink fibers are actin. If you are made of actin, I'll call you I because you are isotropic. That's the I band. Another is the myosin. I'll call you the A band from anisotropic. Be careful, the A-band contains myosin and some actin, not just myosin. Inside the A-band, there is a beautiful zone right here, which has myosin only but no actin. Here, 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 and here. We will call this the H zone, which comes from the German Haller, which means brighter. In the midline, you have the M line. Between the A-band and the I-band, or at the A-I junction, we have these beautiful transverse tubules, or T-tubules. Why transverse? Because they traverse the entire freaking myofibril like this. They cut through the chase. These T-tubules have some kind of receptors known as dihydropyridine receptors. Some of them are facing this way, others are facing this way. Same thing is here with this T-tubule. Some DHP receptors are facing this way, others are facing this way. Here, we have the sarcoplasmic reticulum. What the flip is that? This is a modified smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Do you remember the endoplasmic reticulum? Yeah, we had two types. We had rough endoplasmic reticulum and we had smooth endoplasmic reticulum. That's true. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is a modified smooth endoplasmic reticulum. How about the rough endoplasmic reticulum? That's a totally different function. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is to make proteins with the ribosomes ribosomal RNA and all of this crap. This lovely sarcoplasmic reticulum has two swollen ends. Each is called a terminal cistern. What's the function of the terminal cistern? It's a jail. It's a prison for calcium. Calcium is imprisoned within the terminal cistern. Is there a door to the jail that we can open and release the calcium? Absolutely. The name of the door is ryanodine receptor channel. What's going to happen when I release the calcium? Calcium is the hero of contraction. Calcium contraction. And the actin is going to slide over the myosin, your sarcomere will shorten, and your entire flipping muscle will also get shorter. Myosin structure was mentioned in the previous video. We have two heavy chains and four light chains. And then we have tail, body, two arms, two heads. The arms and the heads make those cross bridges that extend from the myosin and then they will grab the actin, get the actin closer to the midline and therefore the sarcomere will shorten and your muscle will shorten. Hashtag muscle contraction. These beautiful heads have actin binding site to bind with actin, ATP binding site to bind with ATP, and ATPase activity to break the ATP and release the energy necessary for contraction. Let's talk about actin, just two chains. 
Actin has an active site. What's that? It's the site at which the actin binds myosin. Which part of myosin? It's gonna bind the cross bridges of the myosin. And these are the two beautiful actin chains forming a helix. What do you see on the actin? Active sites, myosin binding sites, because these are the sites at which the myosin will come and bind with its beautiful cross bridges. You see that? Here is the myosin. Now, of course, the myosin should be thicker than the actin, so forgive me about that. Here is the myosin, and these are the myosin cross bridges. They will attach to the active site on the actin, and they will pull the actin this way. So this lovely head is going to attach to this one, and this lovely head is going to attach to this active site. And then you pull them this way. And then this head will take the next one, and this head will take the next one, and then pull it this way. Then take the next one, pull it this way. That's how your actin is brought closer to the midline. That's how your sarcomere gets shorter in length. Your myofibrils get shorter and the entire muscle gets shorter. You get the insertion closer to the origin of the muscle. Hashtag muscle contraction. But hey, metacosis, would you leave those active sites exposed like this? Shut up, doofus. This will lead to continuous contraction with no relaxation until you die. So what should we do? Tropomycin came to cover and hide those precious little flowers known as the active sites. But why did we call it tropomyosin, not tropoactin, even though it is attached to the actin? Because the tropomyosin is facing the myosin, is preventing the myosin from attaching. It's oriented towards the myosin, blocking it. Let's describe tropomyosin. If it ends in IN, it's probably a protein, long filamentous protein, located in the grooves between the two actin chains, and it covers the active sites on the actin, preventing the myosin from attaching. Myosin is a protein. Actin is a protein. Tropomyosin is a protein. Welcome another protein, it's called troponin. This lovely troponin has three globular protein molecules. One is called troponin I, one is called troponin T, the third is troponin C. And you will find them at intervals on top of the actin. Why three parts? Because troponin I will bind to the actin. But hemodicosis actin doesn't start with an I. Yes, doofus, but actin is isotropic and it was the I band. Yeah, that's why troponin I binds to actin. The I, the isotropic. How about troponin T? Troponin T is gonna bind the tropomyosin. And troponin C is gonna bind the calcium. Who is the here of contraction? Calcium, right? So calcium is gonna come and bind to troponin C. And then troponin T is gonna take that tropomyosin and peel it off the actin, remove it from the actin, exposing the active sites on the actin so that myosin can come and bind to the active sites on the actin and then muscle contraction will happen. Calcium came attached to the troponin C and then troponin T is gonna remove the tropomyosin and then the active site is exposed, myosin can bind to actin. These cross bridges come from myosin and then bind to actin. This will not happen until calcium comes from its prison. Calcium binds to troponin C and then troponin T is gonna take that tropomyosin away, exposing the active sites on the actin. The myosin cross bridges are gonna extend from the myosin to the actin, pull that actin inwards, and then the sarcomere will shrink. The entire muscle will shorten, hashtag muscle contraction. So let's start the story from the beginning. You need an action potential. Sure, how does the light bulb emit light? Electricity has to come first, and then the light comes later. So electricity has to come first, the action potential, and then the contraction will happen later. All right, action potential is gonna enter through the T-tubules, and this will go to the jail and will release calcium from the jail by opening the ryanodine receptor which is attached to the dihydropyridine receptor. Now calcium is released from the jail through the ryanodine receptor onto the dihydropyridine receptor into the T-tubule and it's gonna move in the opposite direction to the action potential until the calcium finds the beautiful troponin C and then the troponin T is gonna bind tropomyosin exposing the active sites on the actin. Myosin is gonna extend the cross bridges Bring those actins closer to the midline, the sarcomere will contract, the entire muscle will contract, mission accomplished. 
So here is the sarcoplasmic reticulum with a terminal cistern. A sarcoplasmic reticulum with a terminal cistern, the T tubule in between. We call this the triad. The triad is made of one T tubule and two terminal cisternae. Here is the T tubule. Here are the two beautiful terminal cisternae. Action potential has arrived, and now it's time to release calcium from the jail. How will you do this? First of all, you gotta understand that the T-tubule has L-type calcium channel known as dihydropyridine receptors. And this is a tetrameric structure, which means homotetramer, which means four parts. One, two, three, four. Each dihydropyridine receptor is attached to a ryanodine receptor on the other side of the pond. This ryanodine receptor is also tetrameric, four pieces. Once the action potential arrives, this is the signal to release calcium from the jail. Calcium is gonna come here through the ryanodine receptor, enters through the dihydropyridine receptor, goes up the T-tubule until it reaches troponin C on the actin, remove the tropomyosin, expose the active site on the actin, boom, muscle contraction. Action potential comes in, calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum's terminal cistern. Calcium goes through the ryanodine receptor, which is the door of the prison, and then through the dihydropyridine receptor, it has entered into the T-tubule, goes to the actin until actin slides over the myosin. Let's do it again. Action potential came. Calcium is released from the prison. Ryanodine receptor opens, and then the dihydropyridine receptor. Calcium is here inside the T-tubule. It's gonna go until it finds troponin C. Troponin T is gonna bind the tropomyosin and remove the tropomyosin from the active site. The active site of actin is now exposed. Myosin cross bridges are gonna bind to the actin active site and then they will pull them closer to the midline. Hashtag muscle contraction, which is an active process that requires ATP. That's why the myosin heads had ATP and ATPase activity. All of this was the story of the muscle contraction, but it didn't start here. It started in the nerve, because remember, electricity has to happen before light. So that's the electricity coming from the cholinergic nerve fiber. That's a nerve. And then the nerve is gonna talk to the muscle. That's why we call it the neuromuscular junction. The nerve will convince the muscle to contract via a neurotransmitter. If you have watched my previous videos on nerve physiology, we have talked about the action potential before. How do you get activation or depolarization? Sodium has to enter into the neuron. Sodium is positive. Bring the positive in. The inside will become more positive, getting me closer to the threshold until I, boom, spike. This beautiful spike, that's the activation. Once this area of the nerve is active, it's going to activate the next, the next, the next, etc. And the propagation of the nerve impulse is unidirectional. So step number one, sodium channels opened, sodium has entered through these beautiful voltage-gated sodium channels. Sodium influx will cause depolarization. Action potential has started. Number two, action potential is going to propagate in one direction only, closer to the axon terminalis. This action potential is gonna facilitate the opening of another voltage-gated calcium channel. Calcium will enter into the axon terminalis. Calcium will excite this vesicle until the vesicle is gonna rupture by exocytosis. The vesicle is gonna release whatever was inside, which is acetylcholine, a beautiful neurotransmitter. Acetylcholine is gonna bind to nicotinic sub-M receptor, which is found on skeletal muscles. Once the acetylcholine has reached its receptor on the muscle, the muscle will start its own action potential known as the end plate potential, because this part right here is known as the neuromuscular junction, because it's between a nerve and a muscle, or you can call it the motor end plate. Why is there a delay? Because there is a space, there is a gap, there is a synaptic cleft between them. The delay is not half a second, it's half millisecond. Once the action potential has reached the sarcolemma, which is the membrane on the muscle fiber, the action potential is gonna go in both directions, this way and this way. And it's gonna traverse the muscles through the transverse tubules or the T-tubules. Action potential is coming down the T-tubules, beautiful, until it reaches the sarcotubular system. And then you open the door of the jail so that calcium can leave its sarcoplasmic reticulum terminal cisternae 
through the door of the jail known as the ryanodine receptor. Now calcium is going to enter through the DHP receptor or dihydropyridine receptor. Now calcium is inside the T-tubule. Calcium is going to go in the opposite direction until it reaches troponin C. Troponin T is going to bind tropomyosin, remove the tropomyosin away from the active site of actin. Myosin is going to bind the actin and bring it closer to the midline. Hashtag muscle contraction. Action potential comes, release the calcium from the jail, ryanodine receptor, dihydropyridine receptor, calcium through the T-tubule, calcium is going to bind troponin C, troponin T is going to bind tropomycin, remove the tropomycin from the active site of actin, the active site is now exposed, myosin is going to extend its cross bridges, it's going to bind the active site, we need ATP and ATPase activity, release energy, pull that actin inwards, contract the muscle. That's amazing, Medicosis. What would you do with this beautiful acetylcholine after it has performed its job? Would you leave it here? Shut up! If you leave it here, you will end up with contraction, 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 with no end in sight until you die. You gotta get rid of this. How can I do it? Hydrolysis, baby. Break it down in the presence of water. What's the name of the enzyme that does that? Choline esterase, because this is acetylcholine. All right, remove it. Let's do it. Break it down into choline and acetate. See, the acetylcholine is going to become choline and acetate, absolutely freaking lootly. And then you can recycle them back to make new acetylcholine. Remember when I've told you before that the end plate potential is excitatory. Also, the excitatory post-synaptic potentials are excitatory, but the inhibitory post-synaptic potentials are, guess what, inhibitory. When it comes to neurotransmitters in your brain, glutamate and aspartate are excitatory, GABA and glycine are inhibitory. Quiz time, question of the day. This is question number 20. The previous questions are in previous physiology videos. The question is, there are two autoimmune diseases, which means autoantibodies attacking your own body instead of attacking foreign invaders. All right, and they cause muscle weakness. First disease attacks those calcium channels. The second disease attacks those nicotinic sub m receptor the first disease attacks the presynaptic neuron however disease b attacks the postsynaptic surface the question is what's the name of disease a what's the name of disease b let me know the answer in the comment section you'll find the correct answers in the next video let's review the skeletal muscle contraction initiation from picmonic here is a skeleton muscle skeletal muscle is going to contract how does it happen? You need acetylcholine, acetyl cola. How do you get depolarization of the membrane? Sodium influx. Until you reach the threshold, you're gonna tip the scale, which will open voltage-gated calcium channel. Release the calcium from its prison. What was the name of the prison? The sarcoplasmic reticulum's terminal cistern. Calcium is being released onto the myofibrils. Calcium is gonna bind troponin C. And then troponin T is going to take the tropomyosin, remove it, exposing the active sites on the actin. Myosin is going to bind actin. Myosin will bring actin closer to the midline. Hashtag muscle contraction. I have more than 800 videos on YouTube, but I have other premium videos on my website, medicosisperfectionaries.com, such as my cardiac pharmacology course, my antibiotics course, and my endocrine pharmacology course. And for the next 10 students only, you can get a 30% discount towards anything on my website. Just use promo code SAVE30 at checkout. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses or to book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Check Picmonic for some doozy medical mnemonics. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.